It is a truth universally acknowledged that Marissa must wait until the weirdest possible time of day to film because what is good lighting anyways? Hey guys, Marissa here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have kind of a quick, relatively light on substance yet hopefully fun video for you because a couple of weeks ago I went to my library's used book sale and picked up a rather nice stack of books that I wanted to share with you guys. I also have um, a new audiobook I wanted to mention and a new ebook I thought I would throw in there as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into it. I thought I would go ahead and just start off with the books from the library sale. Um, and I've kind of stacked these roughly just in order of size. And um, ironically, all of the smaller ones, which I have on top here, are classics. So first of all, I have Great Short Works of Jack London by Jack London, obviously. Um, and I liked the idea of picking up this collection because it has Call of the Wild and White Fang, which I think are probably his most well-known works, but then it also has all of these other works in here, so um, everything right there. Now it occurred to me while watching the trailer for Call of the Wild for approximately the five millionth time that I have never actually read anything by Jack London, so I thought I would go ahead and pick this one up, not to mention the fact that the cover kind of drew me in, I, though I am looking forward to putting this away on the shelf so I can stop looking at this Frankenstein-esque face. Next up I have an American classic, which is The Cider House Rules by John Irving. Now I admittedly know nothing about this book, but I always, always see at least one copy at these library used book sales, uh, which maybe means people don't enjoy it, so I should not have picked it up. But after seeing about four copies of it at this particular sale, I thought, you know what, maybe that's a sign, maybe I should pick it up and give it a go. And then I looked up the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? Hang on brain fart. I looked up the description on Goodreads because the back of my book here is literally all just blurbs which don't tell me a whole lot about the story um, and it sounds rather interesting. Uh, so let me read that to you. Raised from birth in the orphanage at St. Cloud's, Maine, Homer Wells has become the protege of Dr. Wilbur Larch, its physician and director. There, Dr. Larch cares for the troubled mothers who seek his help either by delivering and taking in their unwanted babies or by per performing illegal abortions. Meticulously trained by Dr. Larch, Homer assists in the former but draws the line at the latter. Then a young man brings his beautiful, beautiful fiance to Dr. Larch for an abortion and everything about the couple beckons Homer to the wide world outside the orphanage. So I don't know, I don't think I've ever heard of any plot quite like that. So I'm intrigued and I will let you guys know what I think uh, once I have read it. Seriously though, apologies for this whole light situation. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Next up, I have another American classic, which is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Now for someone who studied literature in college, I feel like I should have read more Steinbeck. If I'm not mistaken, the only one of his novels I have ever read was um, Of Mice of Men, Of Mice and Men. And I read that back in high school, so I really need to give him another go. As I understand it, The Grapes of Wrath is Steinbeck's uh, like Dust Bowl era novel, uh, which is a period of time I find rather interesting. I personally am very fascinated by the periods around World War One and World War Two, and this kind of is the bridge period, so I feel like I might actually really enjoy this. But also, this is a, a, one of those classics that I have just heard people really enjoy, whether they're reading it for like an actual assignment or just for pleasure. This is um, a not, a, not a classic I've ever heard anything bad about, so really glad to find this edition. And I have to say, I know it's not in the greatest condition, the, the uh, you know, it's definitely a little bent up and a little worn here, but I quite like the look of a rather beaten up classic cover. I don't know why. Um, I like that it's a little vintagey, a little faded. I think all of the above just kind of gives a certain character to a book and suggests that it has had a rather adventurous life. So I really enjoy that and I'm looking forward to this one. I then have some kind of general fiction that I found at the library book sale, but first I want to talk library sale strategy for a second. So at the library I go to for these book sales, uh, they tend to put all of their like uh, hardbacks in the front. So like when you first walk in, all of the front tables are laid out with hardbacks. They've got all the nonfiction and fiction laid out and all the like coffee table books and like reference materials, stuff like that. That's all laid out in front. And then in the back of the room, they have their mass market paperbacks, first of all, in a bunch of on on a bunch of tables and then at the very very back they have all of their like larger literary fiction paperbacks um popular fiction stuff like that so my general strategy is to go straight back to where i know the literary and kind of like more contemporary fiction will be um as those are typically the books that i'm 
on the hunt for and this time I have to say I think I found some rather good ones so uh, let's get into these but I would love to know what is your strategy for library book sales uh, personally I tend to avoid the uh, hard covers number one because the the way that they price it at my library is they give you a bag and you can fill that bag with as many books as possible and it's just three dollars so um, hardcovers obviously take up more room, but they're also heavier to carry around. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to be light on my feet, you know, and grab those titles before somebody else. So I tend to stay away from the hardbacks, but if you have a different strategy, please let me know. I find the whole thing rather fascinating and it's, it's a bit like a competitive sport if I'm completely honest. Anyways, getting into the actual books. Um, the first book I actually saw once I got to the sale was um, An Officer and a Spy by Robert Harris. Now this um, is something that just, kind of sounds right up my alley. So let me read you part of the blurb here. It says, Paris, 1980s, a whistleblower, a witch hunt, a cover-up, secret tribunals, out-of-control intelligence agencies, and government corruption. Robert Harris, the best-selling author of Fatherland, returns to thrilling historical fiction with a chillingly dark, hard-edged novel of conspiracy and espionage. So it's historical espionage, which sounds fantastic. Where can I hold this? There's, oh well, I guess that kind of works. Moving on to literary fiction, I found this copy of Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan, Jonathan Safran Foer, and I have to admit I've never read anything by him. I also was not aware until reading the back of this, and maybe I should have been because I feel like everybody here on booktube has read this at least once. Um, I also found out reading the back of this that it's kind of a post 9-11 story, uh, which is fascinating. And um, yeah, glad I found a copy of this. But most excitingly, I actually found some translated fiction this time around, which let me tell you is not something I find quite often at this particular library. I think that just speaks to like what people in the surrounding community are reading. Not enough translated fiction, but anyways, um, first of all, I have Love in a Fallen City by Eileen Chang, and this is a uh, New York Review Books original that was translated by Karen S. Kingsbury. Now, I, for the life of me, cannot remember where I heard the name Eileen Chang before, but I'm sure when I stop filming this video and go look it up, it will be incredibly obvious and I definitely should have known uh, known it off the top of my head. Anyways, this is an absolutely stunning uh, cover, which is actually what first attracted me to it. And although it has uh, a little bit of water damage, I just thought this was a really gorgeous find and I'm quite looking forward to getting into this one and seeing what it's about. Um, yeah, I'm not super precious about my books as objects, if you might have noticed again by the like ripped up classics covers. If a book is beaten up, if the spine is broken, it shows it has had a very interesting life. Then I was able to find this copy of My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante, which is the first book in her Neapolitan trilogy. Is that what it's called? The ne Neapolitan novels, I think. If you guys remember Max from Well Done Books, he does not make videos here anymore, but when he did, he was a huge fan of this trilogy of novels, and he was the first one who kind of brought Elena Ferrante to my attention. Now, I obviously have not read her despite all of his um, continued praise, but I um, have never really been sure if I wanted to like commit to buying one of her books, so I thought this was a great way to just go ahead and give her a go, um, again three three dollars for all of these then lastly for translated works and for the library book sale i have here celestial bodies by joka alharthi now this was the 2019 man booker international prize winner so needless to say i was astonished and ecstatic to find this one at the sale now i don't really follow prizes all that closely though i will say that um historically in my reading i have done really well with man booker prize winners typically they are Typically, whoever judges that prize picks books that I have quite enjoyed. So that's, you know, a plus. Um, this one in particular, I was excited about because it's the first Man Booker Prize winner to be translated from Arabic. So I think that's very exciting. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the story, if I'm completely honest. All I know is that it's really, it's about three sisters. Um, and I, I was just excited to find it. Plus it's like in perfect condition. So what are the chances of that? Now, I don't normally share audiobooks and hauls simply because I tend to 
kind of impulse buy audiobooks. I don't do that in my book buying in general anymore, except when it comes to audiobooks, simply because I have a um, an Audible membership and I always have so many extra credits that I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more freewheeling. What is the word? I'm a little bit more um, liberal with my audiobook credit use than I am with like cold hard cash. Anyways, the audiobook I picked up most recently is Forgotten Voices of the Great War by Max Arthur. Now, I won't lie to you guys, I'm on a bit of a World War I kick right now, which always feels a bit weird to say about a kind of gruesome period of history, but um, I saw 1917 in January and that just kind of, as I predicted, kicked off this whole World War I fascination. So I'm reading a lot about World War I right now. I am watching all of the things I can get my hands on set in the time period or about the time period. And uh, this audiobook in particular, I found by watching all of the um, interviews with the 1917 cast. This was actually a book that George Mac Mackay, the um, star of the film, referenced for his research for his role. So I figured that was as good a recommendation as any. But if I'm completely honest, what really sold me on the audiobook was listening to the sample of it. Uh, not only do they have a audio narrator, but they also, it seems like, use actual um, primary source recordings from different people who partook in the war or experienced the war in some uh, shape or another. Uh, so I think the, the experience of listening to that as an audio book and getting to hear the voices of the actual individuals whose stories they're telling uh, just sounds fantastic. So I will be listening to this one probably next, I think, and I will let you guys know what I think. And then again, I don't normally talk about ebook purchases until I have actually read them, but because this one, number one, sounded very interesting, but two, is kind of within the theme of my current reading at the moment, um, I thought I would share it with you, and that is War Fever, Boston, Baseball, and America in the Shadows of the Great War by Randy Roberts and Johnny Smith. Now, I picked this one up from NetGalley. I believe it's still available if you guys have a NetGalley account and you want to pick this one up. It is um, going to be published by Perseus Books, and it's coming out in like actual wide release um, March 24th. So if this sounds interesting to you guys, definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, what really drew me to this is that I have not read a ton of World War I related stuff in general, but I definitely have not read um, about the time period from an American perspective. Most of the material I have been able to find is from the British perspective, which I'm actually okay with because I think it was far, it, it was a war that far uh, what am I trying to say? It was a war that seemed to have a far greater impact on the British forces than the Americans, but that doesn't mean, of course, that I'm not interested in reading about um, the American perspective as, you know, an American myself. Anyways, this book looks at World War I as it impacted the lives of three particular young men in and around Boston. Number one, Babe Ruth, famous baseball player. Number two, uh, the uh, symphony conductor Carl Muck, who I've never heard of, and three, the Harvard Law student Charles Whittlesley. So I think this should be very fascinating and I'm, again, probably going to pick this one up sooner rather than later because I'm just in that mood right now. All right, so those are all the books that I have picked up over the last couple of weeks and if you guys have read any of these uh, books or anything by these authors and you would like to recommend them to me or, you know, leave me like a little review or whatever in the comments, please feel free to do so. I always find it uh, fascinating. But just be warned that because I'm in a bit of a World War One kick right now, I probably won't pick up any of the non-World War One stuff um, for, you know, a little while, at least until I burn myself out on this whole fixation. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much to my patrons for funding my book buying endeavors. And thank you to you guys for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.